are you surrounded with the right people? So look at environment. This has a massive Im impact on yourself and your results. Like if I look at my environment, you know, 90% of people are really supportive. You know, they're on the path. They're, you know, they're creating uh, a life by design. They're, they're on a mission. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're money motivated. They're, they're courageous. They're stepping into their potential, you know, all at different levels. Um, but mostly people are working in that, that direction. I don't have people anymore back in, you know, when I shared this story, I had a lot of people that, that weren't like that, very negative people really doubted everything, super pessimistic. And so I had to like go through this process of elimination and, um, it just sort of happened very organically as I just kept moving in my path, but a lot of people fell away. What the fuck is the rich mystic man and why do I care? Well, stay here and tune in and I'll share how I went from a struggling personal trainer to the rich mystic man I am today. All right, we're, li we're live. Thanks, gents. Everyone can hear me okay? Yeah, cool. It's my first time I uh, bought one of those uh, stand-up desks. And so I've always sat down on it. But today I was like, oh, fuck, I think I might stand up. I feel like it's a bit more of a power position. So it's my first time using it. Um, and I'm so far so good. I'm standing on, I've got like a, a sheepskin mat, which feels nice under the feet. So... Hey, hey, man! Great to have you all. Feel your uh, when I come into the call, like oh, booms! Oh, here we are. So grateful to have you all here. So I'll invite you to let's drop in. So everyone, if you can, if you're driving or something like that, don't close your eyes. Uh, but everyone else, uh, just closing your eyes, if you can. Just a couple of deep, deep breaths in through the nose. Hold at the top. When I say top, hold it like your crown, your pineal. And just let out with a sigh. And again, big deep breath in. And bringing your awareness to your heart. And just sinking deeper into this infinite space. And just becoming aware with any with any feeling, sensation. And not trying to change it, just becoming aware of what it is. Now bringing your awareness to your to your base, your root, the, the bottom of your spine. That feels authentic to to hold, like when you hold your genitals or that area down there, just bringing some some touch or to to help you in that feeling. Now bringing your awareness to your crown, top of your head.
Now it's feeling like a, a current that's running from your crown through to your spinal base, in through your heart, through your central channel, basically through your spine. And if, if it feels right to you, you could just, your outward breath is the energy going down, inwards the energy coming up. And then just feeling this current traveling upwards from your crown into infinity, into the heavens. And just feeling a, an infinite travel above you. And at the same time, the energy traveling down from your spinal base, deep into the ground, into earth. And just allowing yourself to feel and feel the extent of your aura, feel the extent of your body within that aura. And experience yourself as the conduit, the conduit of your life. your unique current. And whilst in this energy, take a 360 degree view, the time stamp of where you're at, where you're currently residing. Good. The bad. The pleasure. The pain. Your wins, your losses, And feeling love, gratitude for your life, all the lessons, all the learnings, everything that's led you to this point, excitement and gratitude for the future, where you're heading, your destiny, your unique path, your unique quirks, your individuality. How you hold yourself, your integrity, your honor, your worth, the love you hold, the love you give. I'm just placing one hand on your heart, 
the other hand on top of it. And then just feeling this, this presence, this energy within you. And then just feeling, imagining that you're, you're gifting this to others in service. To humanity. And just take a couple of deep breaths. Hold at the top. Left side on the way out. One there. And in your own time, opening your eyes, bring your awareness back to the to the screen, to the room, to the other brothers. Just take a moment just to just to, to connect in and just share from your presence now three words to describe your feeling good bad in between negative positive just whatever's whatever whatever uh first comes up and just drop it in the chat just uh mike the yeah just be aware of the being interrupted The, the deeper meaning of that. TK, relaxed, scented, fresh, warm, and well, beautiful. Roman, powerful, awake, strong. Hayden, release, calm. John, after that I felt calm, beautiful. Bruce, at peace, refreshed. Maddie, love, acceptance, comfort, nice. Mike, busy, aware, soreness. Beautiful, wibbles relaxed. Dan, connected, aware, prepared. Nice. Lewis, brother, peaceful, calm, love. Yeah, work, yeah. Alvaro, calm. Awesome, thanks, man. So there's some uh, guys on here that I've uh, met before, others that I haven't. So uh, for the ones that I have, good to see you again. And the ones that I haven't, uh, welcome and uh, good to meet you and uh, grateful that you're here. So just a little, yeah, a little bit about myself and for those who, who don't know me, some of you may have uh, heard me share this story before, some of you may haven't and I invite you just to, just to receive, um, even if you have heard it, uh, allow yourself to receive it because every time you, you hear a story, it really is a, it's a transmission and uh, there's a lot of you know, learnings and different aspects that, that come through us. So just allow yourself to, to receive it. You, know, you might get something different from it. And so uh, I know for me, like, I remember uh, when I was, I was still in my job and I was into personal development. And this isn't actually the story. This is like a <laughs> prelude to the story. Uh, is there was this John D. Martini CD that I had. This is back in the CD days. And it was like a, was it just a, it was one of his talks. It was like an hour talk. It literally went for 60 minutes. And I had this 60-minute commute to work every day. So I was in Sydney. I was driving from like Engadine to Port Botany. And it was about 60 minutes and uh, with, with traffic. And so I'd play this there on the way there, on the way back. And I've, I don't know, I reckon at least 100 times. It's the same thing, right? But just that repetition. And every time I'd hear it, I'd hear something different. I'd go in a different way. So there's power and repetition. And so if you've, if you've heard me share this story before, probably most of you haven't, um, but anyway, just the power of repetition. So I, yeah, when I grow up, I was, I, get, I was really like awkward in social situations. And I just, I really, I found it uncomfortable. I didn't feel comfortable within myself. And so 
one on one, I seemed to be okay, but if it was someone I didn't know, I was very, I was very uncomfortable, very awkward. And if there was a, a group of people, then I really, I wouldn't speak up. I would just, I would sit there pretty much in silence. I would, you, you would probably refer to me as very shy. I was, a, I was a shy person, very reserved. And I was also really, really bad with money. I just, as soon as money came in, I, it was gone. I just spend it. And so I was constantly like, you know, I'd get paid on a Thursday and by Saturday, Sunday, it was all gone. And I was borrowing money off people, off my mom and, and dad and things like that to get me through to the next paycheck. And so, uh, I also discovered this thing called a credit card, which I thought was pretty fucking cool. It's like, you get this free money from the bank. Um, didn't really realize the whole scope where you like had to pay it back then with interest. And so I got myself into this, uh, pretty, pretty terrible financial situation. Um, I was in about $40,000 of credit card debt um, and it would just kept piling up. And I was like, I was in this job and I just I just couldn't get ahead. I was like, I even asked for a pay rise. I got a, got a pay rise, but then I'd just, I'd spend that money still it's just sort of in and out. I was like, I can never get ahead of this, uh, get ahead of this debt. And uh, so I was in this job. I thought I liked it. I realized I didn't like it. And so I wanted to get out and I had a friend of mine. Um, his name was Troy. I was actually one of my brother's mates, uh, Mike, you know him, Troy Cleary, and uh, he was a personal trainer. And so uh, he was he was making pretty good money, two, two or three grand a week. And to me at the time, I was probably making maybe 800 bucks. And I was like, two or three grand. And that's like, that's boy, how do you spend that much money? So I enrolled into a, a personal development course. And so, uh, no, sorry, it wasn't a personal development course. It was a personal training course. And so they taught about like anatomy and physiology and all that sort of stuff. And then the, the second, sorry, the, the third, the third, third of it, like one third of it was focused on business. So we sort of did the anatomy, how to train, how to exercise, all that sort of stuff. And then the last element of it was teaching a business, sales, marketing, and, uh, they had a big focus on personal development. And so the guy that was teaching it, his name was B huge, uh, Benny, Benny B huge. And, uh, he was just the guy that like, I really looked up to. He was just the guy that sort of, I guess he had what I wanted. He was confident. He was funny. Uh, he was professional. He really cared. He was integrity. He drove a Ferrari. Um, he could speak to groups and, you know, he had the successful business. And I was like, this dude has, has what I want. You know, like he has, he's, yeah, he's a, he was a great mentor. And so he uh, shared with me through this personal development um module is like, like you can have anything you want in life it's just about you know finding the right information surrounding yourself in within the with the right people setting an intention of what you want to create and then working relentlessly and diligently consistently in the direction of it and you can become and have whatever you want and i was like maybe a little bit naive at the time probably but I was like, fuck, oh, what do I have to lose? Why don't I just trust this guy? I just believed it. I was like, all right, cool. What do I have to do? And so that I recommended books like Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. And so I just started devouring that information. And I started to realize that things started to shift actually pretty quickly. And so I went from being like really socially awkward, afraid of selling. I quit my I quit my job. I went straight into personal training, and I was like, if I don't sell here, like if I don't get some clients, I don't eat. And so it put a rocket up my ass, and I, you know, started getting uncomfortable, and I started getting in front of people. And so even when I was in personal training, actually, I I started as a personal trainer, and I started getting some results, and I probably had maybe like ten or twelve clients. Then I went to this. It was this it was this seven day workshop or retreat and it was called life design or seven days and they looked at every different area of your life over seven days it was like spirituality it was money it was business it was relationships it was health and so i went to this seven day thing and something happened so who's ever been to like a retreat and that changes their life you know it changes the trajectory of their life things shift they have profound shifts yep yep so after that I came back and I had a goal of like, cause I had these, I was probably like 10, 12, 15 clients a week. And it was maybe like 900 bucks. I was probably still the same. 
I was capped at the same sort of income that I was before in my job, but I wanted to get to 60 clients. That was my goal. So I came back from that um, thing, that uh, retreat, it's called Life Design, and set some big goals, set some targets, what I wanted to create over the next five years. And they impressed upon the power of like 90 days. And if anyone's in our community, this is actually the first 90 day sprint that I ever had. Um, and I came back and from uh, when I started within 90 days, I totally booked myself solid. I was doing 60 sessions a week. So I went from 15 maybe to 60 sessions a week. It's crushing it. I was making like three and a half, four grand a week, balling it, you know, killing it. And, but I uh, soon realized that I was like, fuck, I actually don't have any time. I was like, I'm working so fucking hard, right? But I don't actually have any time to really enjoy myself. And I'd come to like the weekends, I'd, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be broken. I'd just have to sleep. And my girlfriend at the time was like, come on, let's do something. Let's go out. I was like, nah, it's just like, I just want to, I just want to be on the couch. So I realized I didn't have much work life balance. So what I'd love to explore with you guys as a practice or as a, as an exercise is to look at those uh, four things that I mentioned. So surrounding yourself with the right information, uh, surrounding yourself with the right people, setting uh, a strong intention and then working relentlessly, courageously and intensely in the direction that you want to go. So I want to take, take a moment here and just for you guys to do a little bit of a, uh, a stock take on your life now and just ask yourself, you know, for probably, probably uh, reverse engineer it. It'd be start, it'd be the first thing would be like, what's my intention? Like, what do I want to create? What do I want to create? Who do I want to become? So let's start there. Pen to paper. Um, if you're driving or something like that and you can't write, just sort of do like a mental stock take and maybe when you get home, write it down. But what what is your intention? What is the thing that you wish to create? And it can include like, you know, who you want to become or maybe it's a financial result, it's a business result. But what what is it you want to create? Just for the... Uh, uh, for the... The purpose of time we won't go too deep on it but maybe if you want to write it down you can come back and add to it or okay so we'll just uh yeah like i said if you want to add anything to it later or if you like you add you know you don't want to yeah add some more juice to it um so next question is like do you have the right information and that information are you, are you immersing yourself within that information next question are you surrounded with the right people? So look at the environment. This has a massive Im impact on yourself and your results. Like if I look at my environment, you know, 90% of people are really supportive. You know, they're on the path. They're, you know, they're creating uh, a life by design. They're, they're on a mission. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're money motivated. They're, they're courageous. They're stepping into their potential, you know, all at different levels. Um, but mostly people are working in that, that direction. I don't have people anymore back in, you know, when I shared this story, I had a lot of people that, that weren't like that, very negative people really doubted everything, super pessimistic. And so I had to like go through this process of elimination and, um, it just sort of happened very organically as I just kept moving in my path, but a lot of people fell away. Right. So ask yourself now, are you surrounded with the right people? This keeps you accountable. And, uh, yeah, maybe with that is like write down the people that are supportive of you. There might be some people in your life that are super supportive. It might just be one or well, maybe it's none. If it's none, then, you know, maybe, maybe you need to find some more people and maybe it's someone that you don't physically know, you know, like even, even books and podcasts and, you know, trainings like this, it's like, you know, you're, you are surrounding yourself with those people. You may not have like a, a proper friendship with them or a relationship with them as such, but there is some sort of connection that can keep you accountable. All right. Last one. Are you? working relentlessly and courageously in the direction of your intention of where you want to go, what you want. Or are you putting it off, distracting yourself, postponing it, focusing on low, low priority stuff that's not relevant to this intention, this burning desire. Okay. So that was an exercise to, to bring it to your awareness. Now, has anyone, has anyone read or been uh, working with, um, 
the book or the teachings to the gene keys. Yeah. Okay. Epic. Really profound. Highly recommend it. And so our two gene keys that are in my profile, um, it's the 56th gene key and the 60th gene key. They're in like my life purpose, uh, mission aspects. And, um, the, uh, the two shadows of them is our distraction and limitation. So for me, I've had my whole life, um, and, and especially at this time, sort of when I shared around being a personal trainer, like I had a big goal, I had a big dream and even, you know, post that, but I'd always got to keep putting it off. I was always distracted by something else. So many distractions, so many limitations or perceived limitations, so many things holding me back and I constantly put it off. You know, even, even this morning, just not being aware of distractions. Like I came down here, I was like, cool, an hour, I've got an hour. I want to really get in the zone for this call, an hour, cool. I'm just going to get really in the channel. And I was like, I needed to put a post in the TF, the TFE men's group. And then all of a sudden I'm messaging people and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing clean? I spent 15 minutes just messaging people. I'm like, just distracted. And so there's so many distractions, right? So I want you guys to take a moment now and become aware of, from the intention that you shared above, like, where are you being distracted? Just to give you some prompts, social media, your partner, your children, yourself, your habits, your parents, your pets, your sports, TV, Drugs, alcohol. Where are you being distracted? Now, some of these things, all those things that I said, they're not they're not always a distraction. Like my family cannot be a distraction and part of my purpose and spending time with them is amazing and incredible and needed. Other times they're a distraction. So becoming aware of when it's a distraction or how it's a distraction. And just putting pen to paper. Same with drugs. I can use drugs for a special specific intention for healing or whatever, or clarity or insights, but then all like, oh, I can use it to escape distraction. Okay. So same thing with that. Maybe coming back to it might uh, demand a little bit more space. And also become aware of it over the next day or two. Just, just become aware of where you're being distracted. It's like, I have that awareness now by exploring this more and like that's when I was like this morning and I was like oh holy shit I'm distracted oh fuck okay cool back into it you know so you, you can catch yourself it's okay distractions are everywhere uh, I mean like I said sometimes sometimes scrolling on Facebook is intentional it's even if you're just endlessly aimlessly doing it it's like it's not a bad it's not a bad thing it's there for a purpose but sometimes aimlessly endlessly doing it when you should be doing this it's a distraction let us become aware of what's a distraction, what's not, what's intentional, what's a purpose, what's part, what's part, what's giving you some space, what's some time off, some time out. So nothing's right or wrong. Only you know what's a distraction and what's not. But just become aware of that. Second one's limitations. So we all have limitations. We're limited by time by money by gravity by our body by our sight by our mind by our thoughts thinking is another big distraction So what's some limitations you have? Where are you limited? Maybe this is like you feel limited in your education or your knowledge or something you don't know or something maybe you're putting off. You're like, oh, listen, I want to execute this marketing campaign, but I don't know how to build a funnel. So you don't do it. That's okay. Like I, I wouldn't know how to code a funnel either, but I know how to resource someone who can code a funnel that, funnel that can then get that funnel created. So we all have limitations. I can't be good at everything. I can't do everything, right? But I can understand what my limitations are and then create structures in my life to support me and support from other people that can support me where I'm limited 
and call on other people's strengths that can support me then to get that task or that thing done. So where are your perceived limitations of what it, what's holding you back? Who's having some realizations? Great. So same thing with that is just become aware. Notice yourself over the next couple of days. I feel uh, by being on this call and uh, as cracking open this awareness, you'll start to notice you're like, holy shit, fuck. There's so many things that I that I want to do that I'm not doing because of these these limitations, and I don't have the right support structures, and I haven't give, given myself permission to to do them because of this uh, belief that I can't do them. And maybe you can't do it, or maybe it's a new skill set, is maybe it's something you need to learn potentially, or maybe it's something you need to like outsource and find someone that you can collaborate with or the point to to take on that role because. The reality is if we all just did what we said we were going to do and acted on the, the visions that we have and the downloads that we have and the insights that we have, can we agree that life would be a lot different? I know it would be for me. You know, I, I, I limit myself a lot. I distract myself a lot and I catch it quickly. And I still keep moving the needle forward. And so it's not about being perfect and eliminating it all. But it's about becoming aware of it, catching yourself, and then taking action in the, in the direction you want to go regardless. And gradually, step by step, piece by piece, layer by layer, it starts to shift. And things that were a limitation or were a distraction, they no longer are, mostly. Or it's like it goes from 90% down to 10%. And you can go to www.clintxmorgan.org forward slash the rich mystic man to find out more about the 12 month uh, program. And you can DM, DM me on that. There's a link and we can have a conversation and see if it's a right fit for you. Big love, brother. I'm struggling, thinking of the bullshit that I've been juggling. Is there more to life than this? I'm thinking twice. Back to pass some pain in this mind of life. A sweatshop on the